and the chairman of the main opposition National Democratic Congress, Samuel Fosampofo, has been granted bail after about five hours in police custody. Speaking to the media after his release, the General Secretary of the party, Johnson Esedun Ketia, said that the chairman went through a series of questioning in relation to some accusations leveled against him. There have been um, attempts by the government of Ghana to use the security services to intimidate us in NDC and frustrate our activities. So we got to a point where our Council of Elders had to come out to declare that enough was enough. And that, from that day going, we are not going to respond to any frivolous invitations by the police. And that if they found anything against us, they are free to take us to court. So eventually, we began seeing newspaper headlines that uh, an arrest warrant has been issued by a court of competent jurisdiction. Uh, against our chairman. So we being a law-abiding political party called the police to come and confirm whether indeed there is such an arrest warrant. Because we cannot be relying on newspaper headlines. So we arranged and we met this afternoon. And indeed, they showed us the arrest warrant. And it was based on that arrest warrant that we reported to the CID headquarters. So um, they've asked all the questions they wanted answers for. They've searched the premises and residence of our national chairman. They've taken all his uh, communication gadgets with a promise. And we've offered to give them the password because we don't have anything to hide. And so based on that, he's been granted bail. We've given them time to scan all the uh, electronic gadgets. And if they are satisfied, they can, they can now determine whether they, they have sufficient evidence to, take, to proceed further or to, to declare the, the, the case null and void. He's been granted bail and we've executed the bail. So we are reporting here um, on Thursday. So that's the General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, uh, Johnson Esiedun Kitia, popularly known as General Mosquito. He's joined us on the phone lines now to uh, actually pick his thoughts on what he makes of this recent development and why the NDC is saying that there seems to be some political vindictiveness or vendetta uh, regarding the, the invitation that was handed to the, the chair of the NDC. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. To start with, um, why is the NDC, uh, and by that I mean you, because uh, you actually spoke to the media after the release of um, uh, Mr. Fusampa, why is the NDC saying that there seems to be a political ploy and that the government is using the security apparatus to intimidate the NDC? Yes, but I believe everybody uh, who has a discerning mind cannot escape that conclusion. Because you, you have a situation where people have shot and named 18 of our supporters. And none of them, absolutely none of them, has been invited to the police for anything. And then the chairman of our party, who actually called for a withdrawal of the party from the by-election because he, uh, on account of uh, security, he rather gets arrested and charges put on him as a, as a criminal. We just cannot understand. And then as if that was not enough, 
every two weeks, you just jump up in the charge, and then you, you put it on, on, on uh, uh, one of us. And so we have said that uh, we have come to the painful conclusion that the you know, security services have been compromised and are being used by the, 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 the government to prosecute their political agenda. And but but General, that General. We're doing ourselves and the nation good service if we complied with those type of wrong uh, uh, abuse of uh, the state power. That is why we have to uh, take the steps we are taking. We are okay. law abiding. Anybody who is arrested will eventually be taken to court. G General Mosquito. We are saying that if we are invited to court, we will go. But right. to respond to invitations... Let, uh, like let, me, let me come in here, General. Let me come in here. You... Yeah. You're, you're saying that you are law-abiding, and by law, the security agencies are mandated to invite you if, for instance, an allegation is leveled against you, to come and help them in resolving. And that's what we know happened. A letter was sent to the chairman and invited following an allegation that against him. They are abusing him. that power. You have How do you mean they, you mean they are abusing it? can be abused. So you cannot condone an abuse of state power. So what they are doing amounts to abuse of state power. That is why we have come to that conclusion. That these are people who have been uh, an organization who, which has been politicized. And therefore, we are not going to subject ourselves to that abuse. And it is the, the right of every citizen to resist uh, those type of things. Can similar accusation be leveled against the NDC when you are in power? Because under your... Your, your, your government as well, there were NPP people or people who uh, were of opposing political views also invited and in certain circumstances had the same reaction of, of, of what you did yesterday with party supporters and all of them going to the party headquarters. Case in point, can it Japan? So can it, is so it fair happened? to say that the NDC also abused power? What happened then? You tell me. When oh, you refuse you... invitation, what happened? Sorry? I said, when they refused the invitation, what happened? Well, he was also arrested. He was picked up. That is Kenya Japan. And so what happened? <laughs> what do you mean, what happened, uh, General? Because <laughs> what you are saying is an accusation no, that you... I you... am saying that... Uh -huh. I'm saying that this, uh, this, this uh, 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 you know idea of always finding equalization and so on that is what fertilizes wrongdoing exactly the point you're making but general saying, what what then does that, that what then does that say doing, about we are not going to condone it if anybody thinks that what we are doing is wrong let them apply the law and we are that is why uh, uh, we are doing what we are doing but what would because you what would you tell your you what would you tell the electorate, I, the NDC supporters for that matter, that me. if you are in leadership position and you are invited, yes. whether it's been an abuse of power by the security agencies or not, it is an invitation. Would you, by so doing, tell your supporters we a leadership of over four million not. people that if you are invited, do not go because it is an abuse? Please, don't, don't repeat what we have. We have said that clearly we will not respond to any invitation by them. So... Whatever invitation they will, they, will, they will extend, the end result is that even if you go, they will protest you for court. Let them send our charges to court. It is the right of every citizen to refuse to make a statement. It is the right of every citizen to uh, um, uh, 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 you know, reject an invitation. So we have said that we will not ask. Honor, but but, but then it is also the right of the security agencies to arrest you if you refuse an invitation, is not? You cannot arrest somebody if he refuses to honor an invitation. Invitation remains an invitation. So we were we responded yesterday because we saw a court order. That was how we surrendered. All right. If you continue any invitation which we consider to be wrongful. Hmm. We will not respond to it. We are grateful. Because, uh, we are grateful. evil tribes, when the right people refuse to speak and stand up to confront it. Right. It is not about legalities because apartheid was backed by law 
Colonialism was backed by law, but we fought it and gained our independence. All right. We thank you for making time to speak with us. Um, the, the General Secretary of the NDC, Johnson is here in Kitia Popular, known as General Mosquito. Um, given his, we'll be speaking to a political science um, lecturer on this to find out whether or not it is even right for people in political position, be it in power or in your position, to refuse such invitations. What kind of message would they be sending to their followers? And in, in case in point, what happened yesterday? chairman of the biggest opposition in Ghana with close to 4 million, in fact, over 4 million uh, uh, supporters. So if you are saying so, that it's an invitation and you would not go, this is not a type of invitation which is like a tea party or come for a chat. This is because an allegation had been leveled against him, allegations of wild proportions that he's behind the infernos, he's behind the kidnappings. So it was actually only fair for him to go and um, clear his name. But that was not what happened. And as of yesterday, we're told that uh, the police got an arrest warrant. It was on the back of that that they went. We've been joined on the line by Dr. Ebenezer Ayenso. He's a political science lecturer. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for your time. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a little correction. I'm a historian, but head of the history and politics section. And politics section. All right. Th thank you. Thank you very much for that correction. To start with... Is there anything that the, the, the common voter or the electorate or the supporter of any of these uh, political leaders can glean from their refusal to, to honor invitations like what happened yesterday? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, and Good afternoon to your listeners. I think, personally, I think it's a bad precedent and um, which should not be encouraged in this country. And being it that bad, do we have any uh, historical antecedent? Were there any sort of precedents, especially before the Fourth Republic? Uh, off the top of my head, I can't recollect. But um, I know if we go back uh, the post independence era, Kwame Nkrumah and the UP people, there were those issues of arrest here and there. And uh, at the system at the time, I did not give room for someone to come out with impunity that I've been called by the police and uh, I'm not going. And from the records, uh, there's nothing like that. And that could be attributed to the nature, the, envir the environment at the time, the political atmosphere of the time, which uh, before you realize you are picked. Mm. And if we come in through the evolutionary days, it's also the same thing that uh, you depict as done or whatever. Mm. But in a, a constitutional dispensation as we have now, I don't think it has ever happened. I mm. don't. Maybe I have to check. All right. Uh, we'll have to leave it here for lack of time, but thank you for making time to speak with us and uh, giving your thoughts on the subject. Uh, Dr. Ebenezer Ayenzo is a, um, a historian and uh, head of the Political Science and History Department of the Institute of African Studies there. This is still Midday Live on TV3. Now, uh, there are those who are questioning the timing of these arrests or these invitations, looking at the fact that we are quite close to another electioneering year, which is in, in 2020, a few months to come. Is it right or is it wrong? Or irrespective of the political time we are in, when someone needs to be invited, he has to honor that invitation, or otherwise he would be arrested. What are your thoughts on it? We'd also be happy to hear from you, because we are sure that you've been following all of these political uh, developments in and around the country. Let's speak to uh, someone who has, is going to give us a security perspective to this, looking at the fact that we are uh, going into an election. And uh, Richard Kumada is a fraud and security consultant. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, to start with... Is this standard procedure if, for instance, the police believe that someone uh, either uh, has committed any crime or something is alleged against that person, is it standard procedure for the police to write to invite the person? Well, we are talking about a heinous crime and a serious one such as kidnapping, uh, which has been unresolved in this country, and uh, everybody is ag being agitated. And the police are saying that they are so conclusive and have done so much investigation and that they have come to a conclusion that 
one man called Samuel Apo, uh, Samuel Ampofo, uh, irrespective of gender, irrespective of the political party he stands with. From where I am standing, the best position is to take the man to court because the two political parties, NDC and MPP, becoming their character and a party and join jamming up the police headquarters. Anytime any of their party big wings has been asked to come there, in particular in this case, when the man has been invited twice and we saw what happened there, I will be saying that for being proactive or in terms of being proactive with the standard procedure, let's put the man before court and we'll avoid all these political issues. Dividing us along political lines on a serious case such as kidnapping, which has taken an international dimension, it will not be good for us. So you are advocating that instead of an invitation and growing all this kind of tension, it should be straight to the judiciary, let the courts deal with it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think the best position from where I am standing, I'm not, I will not be pretending to teach the police what to do, but I'm just saying that in terms of being proactive, and impressive with their investigations and the way they handle such issues, especially when it involves big political people, NDC, MPP, who has the potency and ability to jam out the police headquarters. They should be sending them to court and let them still deal with the issue. In that way, the police will be concentrating on heavier matters such as what confronted on a daily basis. And forget about these political tweets and about NDC and MPP always raising issues about what the police does and how it is being done. It is the same two parties who never allowed the police to be independent. And when it's happy for them, they are happy. When it goes against them, they complain. Let the police and the security agencies rise above policies and let the center be holding. Let us be proactive and let us be responding to the issues instead right. of being reactive. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Richard Kumado. He's a fraud and um, a fraud and security consultant uh, helping us there.